Hi, I'm Hyono from KAIST. In this video, I'll be talking about a system called NIMO, which enables neural enhanced video streaming on commodity mobile devices. Mobile video streaming has experienced tremendous growth over the last decade. According to the market report, the mobile video traffic has increased more than 28 times over the last seven years. On YouTube alone, more than 70% of all video consumption happened via mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. To meet the seemingly insatiable demand, a tremendous amount of efforts have been made to optimize mobile streaming. Most importantly, content distribution network and mobile carriers have made onerous efforts to scale bandwidth. At the same time, to maximize the video quality under bandwidth constraint, there have been significant advances in adaptive streaming, which becomes a de facto standard tool. In adaptive streaming, a client runs an adaptive bitrate algorithm, or ABR, to select an appropriate quality for the current network condition. Despite such efforts, there is a key limitation that video quality is fundamentally constrained by the available bandwidth between servers and clients. So, when the network becomes congested, video quality suffers directly. Recently, the advances in neural enhanced video streaming present tremendous opportunities to overcome the limitation. In contrast to traditional adaptive streaming, a client actively uses own computing power for applying a super-resolution deep neural network or DNN, which recovers high-resolution video from lower quality transmissions. Next video shows the great benefits of a super-resolution DNN. It takes the low-quality video on the left and generates the high-quality version on the right. We can see that video becomes much more clear by applying the DNN. Unfortunately, we observe that mobile devices cannot benefit from this. As a super-resolution DNN is computationally too expensive, it causes several problems on mobile devices related to real-time processing, power consumption, and heat dissipation. To clearly demonstrate this, we measure the overhead of running super-resolution on a recent smartphone which equips with the Qualcomm Snapdragon A55 processor. During the experiment, we played a 240p video and applied super-resolution frame by frame to obtain a 960p video. For super-resolution, we used the three different quality DNNs from NAS and run them on the mobile GPU. Here is the result. It shows that the smartphone cannot run the DNNs at real time to support online video streaming. Even the lowest quality DNN is processed at around 10 frames per second. One can further shrink the DNN size to accelerate it, but this would largely sacrifice the quality. Even worse, heavy computations occur excessive amount of power consumption. Compared to traditional video streaming without DNNs, running super resolution DNNs causes 5 to 18 times more power consumption. This also largely decreases the battery life from 11 hours to between 30 minutes and 2 hours. Lastly, we present thermographic images of the smartphone surface. Before starting video playback, the surface temperature remains at around 26 degrees. However, when you apply the high-quality DNN, the temperature quickly reaches around 43 degrees at which a user can feel pain. Inspired by the limitations, we built a system called NEMO to enable real-time video super-resolution on commodity mobile devices. As in NAS, NEMO considers servicing neural enhanced adaptive streaming. Also, NEMO targets various Android devices from an entry level to a high-end version. To achieve this goal, we ask ourselves a series of pivotal questions that lead to the key design choices. The primary question we faced is how to accelerate video super-resolution. To answer this, we rely on our key observation that video contains a large amount of temporal redundancy across successive frames. 
In contrast to applying super resolution frame by frame, the temporal redundancy implies that super resolution result can be reused to benefit other similar frames. So, we decided to leverage temporal redundancy to accelerate video super resolution. Throughout this video, we will call frames applied by super resolution as anchor points and the others as non-anchor frames. The next question we come up with is how to reuse the results of super resolution. To do so, we need the information about fine-grained frame dependencies. For each block within a current frame, we need to find the most similar block in the previous frames in a highly precise manner. However, this requires heavy computations and can largely diminish the computation savings. Fortunately, we observe that the rich information about frame dependencies is already embedded in compressed video frames. For example, reference index points to the most similar frame among the previous ones, and the motion vector represents the position of the most similar block. Next, residual contains the temporal difference between the previous and the current frame. This information is processed inside a video codec while decoding a frame. Thus, we opted to use the codec internal information for efficiently reusing super-resolution results. But the reduced computation inherently sacrifices the quality, which leads to the last question, how to guarantee the resulting quality. So, we would like to ensure that the resulting video quality is within a small margin compared to that of per-frame super-resolution, such as 0.5 dB in PSNR. But we observe that the quality improvement each frame produces when selected as an anchor point widely varies between frames. This implies that anchor point selection greatly affects the video quality. So, we decided to select an optimal set of anchor points that delivers largest quality improvement. However, there are two key challenges for realizing these approaches. First, we aim to leverage codec internal information, but typical codec implementations do not allow access to it. This is because they provide a limited decoding API that returns only raw pixel values. Here, the information we need is solely processed inside the codec and thus not accessible by the conventional API. To address the challenge, we built a new codec called SR Integrated Codec that incorporates a super-resolution mechanism. Next, we target selecting an optimal anchor point set, but the exhaustive search is not feasible. This is because the number of possible sets of anchor points are on the order of 2 to the number of frames. Also, obtaining the quality of each anchor point set requires running the actual video codec. As a result, exhaustive search spans tens to hundreds of hours per second of video. To address the challenge, we approximately estimate the quality to choose optimal anchor points. Now, let's look at the two design components in details. First, to leverage codec internal information, we build the SR Integrate codec that incorporates both the super resolution and a reuse mechanism. When a compressed frame is passed to the codec, it first checks whether the frame is an anchor point or not. If the frame is an anchor point, the codec upscales it by applying a super-resolution DNM and caches the resulting high-resolution frames. Otherwise, the codec reuses the cached frames to upscale the current frame using the codec internal information. Now, I will explain this in more detail. As I mentioned before, a compressed frame contains the information of frame dependencies such as reference index, motion vector, and residual. First, the codec uses a reference index to select a high-resolution frame among previously reconstructed ones in the cache. Next, the codec scales the motion vector. For example, when it upscales a frame from 240p to 960p, the motion vector is multiplied by 4. 
Using the motion vector, the codec transfers the target block from the reference frame to the current frame. Finally, the codec upscales the residual block using lightweight bilinear interpolation and then accumulates the output to the transfer block to generate a high resolution block. In summary, for non anchor frames, Nemo replaces heavy DNN computations with lightweight operations such as motion compensation and bilinear interpolation. As a result, Nemo processes non anchor frames very fast effectively amortizing the latencies of anchor points. Next, the goal of anchor point selector is to choose an optimal set of anchor points. Mathematically speaking, it selects a minimal number of anchor points, bracket AP, among all frames within a video, bracket F. Also, the quality difference with per frame super resolution must be less than a small margin, which is set to 0.5 dB in PSNR. Here, the problem is that the search space of anchor point sets is 2 to the number of frames, and thus exhaustive search is not feasible. But our key observation is that if anchor points are sparsely located, the search space can be reduced to the number of frames. I'll explain this using the following example, which represent an actual frame dependency graph. Here, the red boxes are anchor points, and the gray boxes are non-anchor frames. Now, let's focus on the quality of frame 62. As there are two former anchor points, frame 2 and 51, both affect the quality of frame 62. But, frame 51 is located much closer compared to frame 2 and has much higher impact. So, the quality is mostly determined by frame 51. Then, we can approximate the quality as below, disregarding the impact of frame 2. Based on our observation, we can approximate the quality gain of a frame that uses a set of anchor points, bracket AP, by the maximum quality gain of using a single anchor point F. Next, we can estimate the video quality by averaging the qualities of all frames within a video. The equation implies that we need to only measure the qualities of all possible sets of anchor points of size 1, which has linear complexity. By leveraging the quality estimation method, we iteratively select the most impactful anchor points. Then, we record the selected anchor points into a file called a cache profile. In summary, Nemo analyzes a video to select optimal anchor points. As a result, under providing the same quality, Nemo significantly reduces the number of anchor points by around 70% compared to baselines, which randomly or uniformly select anchor points. Still, there is one remaining problem of guaranteeing real-time processing. This is complicated because both videos and mobile devices are heterogeneous. First, depending on how dynamic a video is, a different number of anchor points is selected to deliver visually satisfying quality. Next, mobile devices range from an entry level to a high-end version and thus have widely varying computing capacities. To tackle this problem, we first create multiple performance options at the server side, including low, medium, and high. For each performance option, we use a separate DNN with varying quality and generate the corresponding cache profile. Next, we provide a guideline that describes the best option for each mobile device. To do so, we first set up a device full for testing all the options on various mobile devices. Then, using a sample video, we once measure the latencies of anchor points and non-anchor frames. Then, for other videos, we estimate the latencies using the measurement results and select the highest quality that runs at real time. Finally, this information is written to a manifest file. Now, I will summarize how Nemo works in an end-to-end -end manner. First, at the server side, the anchor point selector chooses optimal anchor points and records them into a cache profile. Then, it is delivered to a client at the beginning of video streaming. Next, at the client side, the SR integrate codec refers to the cache profile 
and then selectively applies super resolution. We built Nemo on top of the reference VP9 codec called libvpx and the standard Android player called exoplayer. We now evaluate Nemo by answering three questions. First, we show that Nemo can run real-time video super resolution in a battery and temperature-friendly way. Second, we show how much video quality improvement Nemo can deliver. Lastly, using an adaptive streaming setting, we show how much user QA improvement Nemo can achieve. During the experiment, we played the 240p video and applied Nemo to obtain the 1080p version. We used a recent smartphone called Xiaomi Mi 9, which equips with Qualcomm Snapdragon A55. Next, we used total 30 YouTube videos, in which three different videos are selected from the top 10 popular categories such as product review, how to, vlogs, and so on. For super resolution, we used three different quality DNS, including low, medium, and high, and their architecture is similar to that of NAS. I want to first show you the highlight video, which is made by recording the smartphone screen. The left half is what adaptive streaming delivers when the network becomes congested, and the right half is what Nemo provides under the same environment. You can see that the video is much clearer in Nemo. To illustrate how Nemo enables this, we first compare overall processing throughput. In the graph, x-axis is a content category and y-axis represents throughput in frames per second. Here are the results of per frame super resolution with varying qualities. And this is what Nemo achieves. Nemo selects different quality DNS depending on contents. 70% of them are high quality and the others are medium quality. Overall, Nemo improves the processing throughput by 11 times on average compared to per frame DNN counterpart. And the throughput improvement varies across contents inversely proportional to the number of anchor points. Next, we compare the power consumption and the battery life. To do so, we disassemble the smartphone and replace its battery with the power monitor. Per frame super resolution causes 14 times more energy consumption, reducing the battery life to less than an hour. In contrast, Nemo drastically reduces the energy consumption by 88%, increasing the battery life to 6 hours. Compared to video streaming itself, Nemo still consumes energy more than 70%. We also measure the surface temperature of the hottest point during processing 10,000 video frames, which roughly stand for 5 minutes. We also present thermographic images after video playback. With per-frame super resolution, the device temperature quickly reaches higher than 40 degrees at which your user can feel pain. But, Nemo maintains the temperature at around 32 degrees, which does not hamper user experience. Next, we compare video quality gain in PSNR for the 10 content categories. Here are the results of per frame super resolution, and this is what Nemo achieves. Nemo consistently delivers large quality improvements between 1 to 6 dB in PSNR. This is because Nemo ensures that the quality difference with per frame DNN counterpart is less than 0.5 dB. Also, Nemo delivers better quality compared to per frame medium or per frame low. Lastly, using adaptive stream setting, we compare an objective QA metric which consists of bitrate rebuffering, and the smoothness of qualities. We used 200 real network traces measured from US broadband and Norway 3G network. For super resolution, we used three different mobile devices, including an entry-level and a high-end smartphone and a tablet. Here is the QE of traditional adaptive streaming with the passive ABR algorithm. And this is what Nemo achieves. Overall, Nemo improves the QoE of mobile users by 31% on average. 
Also, the benefit of NEMO increases as a mobile device has higher computing capacity. To sum up then, I have talked about three things. First, NEMO is the first video delivery framework that enables real-time video super resolution on commodity mobile devices. Second, NEMO introduces novel design components such as SR Integrity Codec and Anchor Point Selector. Finally, NEMO delivers significant performance improvement. In addition, NEMO source code will be available at the following GitHub repository. Thank you for your attention.